Welcome back to our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions Lesson 6, Exponential Modeling with Percent Growth and Decay Home Review Part 3. Please make sure you catch Part 1 too, if you have not done so already. In Part 3, we are going to start off with a uh, question number 8. A warm glass of water, initially at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, is placed on the refrigerator at 34 degrees Fahrenheit and its temperature is seen to decrease according to the exponential function. T of H is equal to 86 times 0 0.83 raised to H plus 34, where H is the number of hours since placed in the refrigerator. Verify the temperature starts at 120 degrees Fahrenheit by evaluating T of 0. Well, we're just going to plug in the 0 value for H, because that's what T of 0 means. So T of 0 is equal to 86 times 0 0.83 to the 0 power, plus 34. Now, any number to the 0 power except for 0 is equal to 1. So we get 86 times 1 plus 34, which is 86 plus 34. And that's equal to 120 degrees. So the next part is to be able to model this uh, this uh, this function using a graphing calculator, kind of sketching it in this case. So we're going to type this into a graphing calculator now. Let's get our calculator ready. So we will go to y equals, okay, okay so we're sure y equals, and we'll type in the formula 86, open parenthesis, 0 0.83, so 0 0.83, close parenthesis, we're going to raise this to not h, but we'll use x for our variable, but that's okay, totally okay, we're going to add in this case 34, plus 34. Now, we're going to sketch this, and based upon the window, the in this case, they gave us a window between uh, domain, in this case, was 0 24. So we go to window, and our x min will be 0. Our x max will set 24, because our range of values for h will be 0 24. Again, we don't have to worry about, you know, setting the y values, because if we hit zoom, zoom fit, which is zoom 0, okay, zoom fit, I'll just scroll down so you can see that here, zoom 0. Zoom fit means we're going to fit the picture into the window of the calculator based upon domain from 0, in this case from 0 to 24. So let's go with here, 0. And we see in this case it's kind of like sloping downwards, no? So we're going to sketch this, no? And so you're probably wondering, well, what's this value way up here? Well, when h equals 0, that's the value of 120, because that's what we found, okay? And it kind of slopes downwards and comes this way, all right? It looks like it hits the, it hits our, our zero value, but it doesn't really hit zero in this case. And we'll see here that if we trace our graph, okay, the values of y get closer and closer and closer to a particular number, all right? Not zero, not zero at all, because in this case, we get closer and closer at 24. We see in this case, we be like 34, close to 34. We can change the window just a little bit, all right? We can change the window to be our Y min set 34.98. Let's change to 32. Okay, and Y max is 120. And we'll graph this. And you'll see in this case, since we go to 30, 32 is the lowest, it gets really close to number 34, all right? So that will be our sketch, our sketch in this case. All right, let's go back to our picture. And so we're going to sketch this picture based upon the graph we had, all right? And so the highest value is 120. And we're going to draw this little line here at 34. This is y equals 34. And so this is 0. And at 24, the graph had a y-intercept of 
120 and it kind of sloped downwards here kind of sketch here it gave close to 24 the 34 but doesn't exactly equal 34 that's our that's our here that's what we have here so our y-axis here we have 120 or 34 uh, hopefully it'll be enough for us and i guess his y-intercept a y-intercept here y-intercept will be 120 which means 0 comma 120 now okay all right, so it's kind of a sketch here, right? It never dips below or hits exactly 34. It will always be kind of below it, a little above it, no, because uh, because in this case, it'll just be a, at, at the very worst, it'll just be very, very close to 34, a little higher than that, though. Okay? Now, after how many hours, the temperature will be at 50 degrees Fahrenheit? So, again, the, the uh, y-axis was our temperature, and this is our time in hours this way. And this is our degrees, the way units here. Okay. So he was saying in this case, uh, say your answer nearest hundreds an hour, illustrate your answer in the graph you drew. Okay, so 50 would be somewhere over here. All right now. Maybe a little bit lower. Maybe a little bit lower though. So let's see. Somewhere over here. Okay. So that's a temperature of 50, which is kind of close to 34, but not exactly. Now on a graphing calculator, it says here how many hours the temperature will be 50 degrees? Well, we could plug in the value of 50 and try to solve for H, but we have this graph on a graphing calculator. So we're going to add one more line here. So for y2, we'll add 50 and hit enter. Well, graph in this case. And so this line here, 50 in this case, we'll see it's kind of sort of above. It looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, around 8. Now, we can do is use second calc, which is basically this function allows us to see where the two graphs intersect. So we'll hit choice 5 to intersect. And we'll move the cursor close to the point of intersection. Okay, kind of looks closer and closer to eight, maybe nine. Oh yeah, an eight and change. All right, so now hit enter three times. One, two, and three. It looks like, oh, our intersection is at 9.0257199. That's the time that we're going to meet there. So going back to our picture. Well, probably close to, so I guess we had we have before a little higher here, so. So here, all right, this would probably be the point of intersection. Okay, at 50 degrees. And so this was about, in this case, it says here, set your hour to, uh, to nearest hundredth of an hour. Well, our hour was, in this case, nine point hundred is two spaces so nine point zero two five seven one nine nine we're gonna move this up a little bit here so we're gonna move this up and so in this case your answer would be after nine point zero three hours okay to nearest hundred is two dust places because and so now I'm gonna look at the I'm gonna look at the five here the thousands place and see if we're gonna add one okay so this will be, so it, on our the graph, it'll be along 9.03 hours. All right, so that's the, that's question number eight. Let me just make this full screen so you see everything here. All right, so we use the graphic help to help us sketch it and all. And the sketch, you know, it's it's not be perfect, but, you know, you try to do the best you can, all right? I would use straight edge. Maybe I should use straight edge and all, so. Okay. Question number nine. Presents combined in strange ways, but don't make sense at first. It would seem if population grows by 5% per year for 10 years, then it should grow by a total of 50% 50% over a decade. But this isn't true. Start population of 100. So that would be A of zero equals 100. If it grows at 5% a year, so that would be my R value of 5%, or 0 0.05 for 10 years we would have 
after 10 years, A of 10 is equal to 100 times 1.05 raised to the 10th power. And so we want to find this numerical value. Okay, well, let's take a look. Let's go back to our graphing calculator. And we'll go to here, to our quit here. So we type in 100 times 1.05, all right, raised to the 10th power. And we get 162.88. Okay, so 162.88946272. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. Since it says here, what percent does it grow? Well, let's see now. So we get 162.88954, uh, I think it was 54627. Well, this is approximately 163. Now, what percent does it grow? Well, what is the population? Well, it's about 160 people. 163 people and also. So that's how many people there are after about 10 years. And so what percent does it, uh, what percent growth does it represent? This percent growth, if we started with 100, if we started with 100, so 100 times 1 plus what percent growth, equals 163. That's how we can figure this out because it's, you know, the growth is going to be the R added to 1. And so we divide both sides by 100. We get the 1 plus R is equal to 163. Well, 1.63 in that case. If I subtract 1 on both sides, the rate is equal to 0.63 but 0.63 as a rate, as a percent, is going to be written as 63%. So we see in this case, it's not necessarily 50% because of what they call the compounding of the situation. The compounding of, you know, in this case, uh, of the effect of, of a 5% on top 5% on top 5% every single year. So we would say, for this problem, The total percent growth of the population after 10 years, my timing skills are terrible, is 63%. Because we're using a compounding situation here, okay? And so we will find the total and then figure out the original times one plus r will give equals the amount was three. Then we solve for r, which we'll see. We'll do this quite a bit for our next lesson of lesson twenty-seven, though. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. This is the end of our home review of exponential functions, lesson seven, exponential modeling with percent growth and decay, part three. I hope you found this helpful, and please, if you have any more questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you found this helpful, again, please give it a like. We totally appreciate it for the channel. Again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so, and turn on notifications to know when new videos are added. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and be safe.